Hi everyone, welcome to Irfan CFPS YouTube channel. In today's class, we shall go through different sprinkler system components used in firefighting systems as per NFPA 13. In this session, I shall provide you with a greater understanding of the considerations that must be made when selecting components of a sprinkler system. Please note that all the sprinkler system components must be listed. However, components that do not affect the system performance such as drain piping, drain valves and signs shall not be required to be listed. In this video, we shall outline the characteristics of valves and devices and explain the various types of components installed in different sprinkler systems. Let's begin our class with first system component that is sprinkler piping used in the fire protection industry. As you can see on your screen, steel pipes and copper tubes can be used as sprinkler piping in line with the requirements of NFPA 13. Other piping materials can also be used. However, it has to be specifically listed for fire protection service. Types like K, L and M copper tubes can also be used as sprinkler piping. However, project specifications has to be referred prior to taking the approval from the consultant or client. Any non-metallic pipe or tubes must be listed. As per NFPA 13, any kind of non-metallic pipes or tubes can be used. However, they must be listed. All pipes including specially listed pipes allowed by NFPA 13 shall be marked along its length by the manufacturer in such a way as to properly identify the type of pipe. The marking must be visible on every piece of pipe over 2 feet or exceeding 600 mm. Also please note that pipe identification shall include the manufacturer's name, model, designation or schedule of the pipe. In this slide we can see above ground pipes and fittings. Pipes or tubes shall meet or exceed one of the standards in the table shown on your screen. These tables have been taken from NFPA 13 2019 edition. As you can see on your left hand side, table 6.3.1.1 shows the piping that can be used for fire protection purposes. And on your right hand side we can see from table 6.4.1 that the fittings that can also be used for fire protection purposes. In general, we will go ahead with ERW pipes means welded pipes or seamless pipes for above ground piping and malleable iron fittings with class 150 and groove fittings are generally used in projects. However, each and every project is different so we need to check the project specifications prior to installing any kind of pipe or fittings. In this slide you can see the manufacturing standards for underground pipe. As you can see from your screen that ductile iron pipes, steel pipes, concrete pipes, plastic pipes and copper pipes can also be used for underground piping. However, they have to be accordance with the standards mentioned in table 10.1.1. Let's go through the other system component that is relief valves and automatic air vents. Please note that any system component shall be rated for the maximum system working pressure to which they are exposed but shall not be rated at less than 175 PSI for components installed above ground 
and 150 psi for components installed underground as you can see on your screen wet pipe systems are required to be provided with listed relief valve set to operate at 175 psi or 10 psi in excess of maximum system operating pressure a relief valve is required to help prevent pressure buildup from exceeding the pressure rating of system components let's have a look at control valves control valves can be gate valves or butterfly valves as per NFPA 13 valves which are used to control water flow must be listed and listed control valves cannot be closed in less than 5 seconds due to risk of water hammer an on indicating valve must have a T wrench on site for operation and can be used where acceptable to AHJ and the control valves minimum working pressure is 175 psi let's go through another system component that is inspector test connection a test connection must be provided to test each water flow device for each and every system the discharge should be at a point where it can be readily observed let's go through water flow alarm devices water flow alarm devices must be listed for use with fire sprinkler systems and they must produce an audible alarm within five minutes after the flow begins and must continue until the flow of water ceases water flow alarm devices can be mechanical or electrical if connected to the building fire alarm system it must be installed in accordance with nfpa 72 which is the standard for national fire alarm and signaling code we shall have a look about fire department connections fire department connections provide an auxiliary water supply to the sprinkler system and these connections are not required in special cases such as if the building is in remote area with no fire department access and also if there is a large deluge system that exceeds the pumping capacity of the fire department then these fire department connections are not required apart from that in a single story building not exceeding 185 square meter or 2000 square feet fire department connections in short fdc's are not required backflow prevention devices these devices should be installed in accessible location to provide for service and maintenance in our last slide we shall go through flexible sprinkler hose assembly flexible hose sprinkler assemblies must be installed in accordance with the requirements of listing including the installation instructions provided by the manufacturer in next class we shall go through various hazardous classifications as per NFPA 13 requirements. Thank you for watching. Thank you once again and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to learn more on fire protection systems. Make sure to hit the subscription button below and click on the notification icon to get the updates.